Hello and welcome to this Cantabile walkthrough. Today we're going to be looking at media players. Media players can be used to play back audio and MIDI files, either directly to an output port or to a plugin or series of plugins. The first thing you need to do is insert a media player, which you can do from here or from this pop-up here. And then if you double click on the player slot, you can click the add button and load some files. I've just got some a mix of files here that I use for testing. So there's MP3 files, MIDI files, it also supports WAV files and FLAC files. I don't have any FLAC files here, but it does support them. Okay, so you'll see these get loaded into a playlist. If I press OK, you can see the first one is selected. The next thing we want to check is the connections from the media player. So from here you can see Cantabile has created a connection from the media player's stereo output port to the main speakers. So if I was to play this audio file now, we should hear it, which we do. The MIDI files, if I was to load a MIDI file now, you'll see there's no default connection from the MIDI port because typically you want to send this through a plugin to synthesize the sound rather than directly to an output port. So I'm just going to insert a piano and I'm going to create a connection from this MIDI output port to the piano's MIDI input port. And you'll see now if I play this, we should hear the piano. Okay, that's it for loading media files, uh, setting up their ports. There's a controls on here for gain. So this controls the gain of an audio file or for a MIDI file, it just dials up or down the velocity of the notes being sent by the media player. There's a pan and fade settings here, which are the equivalent to what's on a plugin slot. And then there's a speed setting here, which for the moment only works on MIDI files. I don't have time stretching on audio files yet, but that's coming in a future build, hopefully. So if I was to play this MIDI file, you can see I can adjust the speed down and up. Okay, that, that's the basic controls for a MIDI player or media player. The next thing I'm going to show you is the timeline panel, which is available from the view menu here. And what this does is shows a graphical representation of the loaded file. If you're coming from Cantabile 2, you'll be used to this being in line with the media player itself. It's been moved out here and it's just now shared across all media players. So if you had multiple media players loaded, whichever one you last had selected would be the one that would appear down here. Okay, for MIDI files, this shows a representation of all the notes in the file. And for an audio file, it shows the waveform data of the file. You'll notice that the stereo channels have been merged into one for display purposes here. That's simply because this panel's only intended for navigation, really. So this, these are intended as a reference point to find your way around the file. Okay. In this file, in this uh, timeline panel itself, you can do things like uh, move the current play position. So if you wanted to start playback from a position, you can do that. So you can move it. Okay. You can set play ranges. If you hold the Alt key and drag, you can select a range from here and say, okay, I want to play that range and you'll see. Okay, you can adjust the play range by dragging these handles here. And you can set loop modes as well. So if you wanted to practice along with this and needed it to play a couple of times over, you could loop it, for example. Okay. The play ranges can be saved. So you might, for example, save one range off as the chorus. You might save another range as the verse. And then you can choose those from here. And each, each play range also stores the loop mode so that you can have different loop modes on different play ranges. Okay, besides that, the timeline panel supports all the typical scrolling and zooming actions that you would expect. They're listed out in here, but you can use things like mouse wheel. Control mouse wheel will let you zoom in and out. You can hold the Z key and drag to zoom to a particular range. You can also set play ranges by listening. So if this was playing, close square bracket to set the start and end range so that they can be used to set the play ranges by listening rather than visually 
Okay, uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is the port connections on the player. So by default, each media player gets a stereo output port and a MIDI output port, but these can be customized by right clicking and choosing one of these commands here. So the audio ports, you can create additional channels, uh, additional ports and channels here, and MIDI ports are the same. So you can create additional MIDI ports. So to show this, I'm just going to add a second port. Okay, and I'm going to connect, create a connection from that to another plugin. So just quickly load uh, Diva and load an instrument. Okay, so you'll see now we've got these two instruments loaded and we've got MIDI out going to the piano and the other one, MIDI out two, going to Diva. And what you can do is inside, for each file, you can map the channels or the tracks to different ports. So if I was to load this file and then right click edit current file settings, you can see here that tracks two, three, and four are all mapped to the MIDI app. The reason there's no track one is it removes, it doesn't show tracks that don't have any significant MIDI events. And that's probably a meta track with track name information and stuff. So I'm just going to remap track three to go to MIDI out two. And what you'll find now is if I play this file, some of the file will be going to, or track two and four will be going to the piano and track three will be going to uh, Diva. So if I was to play that. Okay, so you can see MIDI coming out on both of these uh, ports and both of these instruments sounding. So that's Diva only and that's the piano only. Okay. That's how the ports work. It's the same for stereo, uh, uh, sorry, audio ports. So you could map different channels from your audio file to different output ports. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, synchronization. Contabile has a concept of a master transport, which can be selected up here. And by default, it's the metronome, but you can also make a media player the master transport. Now the master transport is the location from where all timing information comes from that is sent to other places. So for example, all plugins will be given the timing information from the master transport, as well as any externally synced devices back to Cantabile also get that MIDI clock information coming from the master transport. So what you'll find now is that, and, and this panel here displays the master transport timing information. So at the moment you can see it's picking up the 65 BPM is coming from this file. So if I was to play now, oh, the other thing about the master transport is that it can be controlled from here as well as from these buttons here. So if I was to play that, you'll see the master transport is now playing and it's controlling this file. So this file has started playback. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can do it the other way around. So if I was to make this the slave, and I'm going to use musical synchronization mode, the master transport is switched back to the metronome, and the metronome is now the master, and this is a slave which is going to syn synchronize to it. What happened there? Okay, so this is synchronized back to the metronome, and you'll notice that the play and pause buttons have gone from here because it's been controlled from the master now. So I'm just going to open the metronome panel. You can see the tempo is 120. And if I play this, you'll hear it's a lot faster because it's synchronizing back to the metronome. Similarly, if I change the metronome's tempo, the media player tracks along with it. Okay, now at the moment, audio files can't really be synchronized properly. Although if you have an audio file that is at the same tempo of your master transport, it will play with it. So if I was to load this file again, you'll see that I can play the master transport and the media player will still play along. Okay, it's just not going to adjust the speed of this file to keep it in sync. It'll, it, you, you need to have the files in sync to start with. The next thing I want to show you is uh, some audio files have a built-in tempo. So this track here, for example, has a tempo. Sorry, I just set this back to uh, not synchronized, has a tempo of 130 beats per minute. So it's just a drum beat track. Now, if this was to be selected as the master transport, 
you'll see that the tempo here is being reported as 130. And the reason for that is if you go into this files settings, you'll see that the tempo is set to 130. And that's because Contabile found that tempo in the file name. Uh, if you have an audio file which doesn't have 130 BPM recorded in the file name, then you may have to set this manually so that Contabile knows the tempo of the file and can synchronize it properly. So what will happen now is if I play this file, you'll see that Contabile's master transport is, is keeping in sync with this file because it's, it knows the tempo now. Okay, so that, that's the basics of synchronization. Um, it's not as powerful as it was in version 2, uh, and there will, will be some improvements coming to it, but uh, at the moment that's the way it is. Okay, that's pretty much it for media players. There's some other stuff you can do with them, like for instance you can create uh, MIDI bindings to them to control these from external control surfaces. They can also be controlled through states, but that's all getting a bit beyond what I'm going to cover in this walkthrough. So that's it for now. Um, I hope you found this useful. Head over to contabulatesoftware.com if you're interested in giving it a try. The media player support is only available in Contabile Solo and Performer. It's not available in Contabile Lite. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.